Surely you've heard of a 5-step plan before. You've probably also heard of a 12-step plan to deal with alcoholism or other drug-related treatments. But have you ever heard of a 39-step plan? No? Well, neither have I, because that sounds absolutely dreadful. Who would want to take that many steps just to try and deal with just about anything? So don't take the 39-step plan. Take this shortcut. But wait, how does that pertain to this game? You'll find out shortly. Actually, it'll take quite a while. But you'll find out. Hi, you folks. Fruit and Doggy here again, back into the 39 Steps. And the Radical Candidate. Really? He didn't seem that radical to me. Yep, we were hobnobbing and rubbing elbows with a young politician. Or would-be politician, because he hasn't done anything yet. Oh, and birds chirping, right? Yeah, I heard some birds chirping. Chirp, chirp, tweet, tweet, tweet! No, 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 chirp, chirp, no, 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 no. A free gift? I swear it says free gift, I don't know why. But I want a free gift. The hall had about 500 in it. Women, mostly. A lot of bald heads and a dozen or two young men. Yeah, a lot of bald women, that. The chairman was a weaselly minister with a reddish nose. He lamented on Crumpleton's absence. So let's soliloquy. I'm no I'm familiar with the word soliloquy. Soliloquized? Yeah, I guess so. Soliloquized on his influenza and gave me a certificate as a trusted leader of Australian thought. He didn't even know who I was! Ho <laughs> ho! There are two policemen at the door. And I hope they took no they took note of that testimonial. See, I'm trusted. About Australia. Then Sir Harry started. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, I guess this is the way I want to go. His notes. He had about a bushel of notes from Richie Red, and when he let go of them, he fell into one prolonged stutter. Every now and then, he remembered a phrase he had learned by heart. Strained his back and gave it off like Henry Irving. The next moment he was bent double and crooning over his papers. So he's not bad one on one, but he's a terrible public speaker. He talked about the German menace and said it's all a Tory invention to cheat the poor of their rights and keep back the great flood of social reform, but that organized labor realized this and laughed the Tories to scorn. He was all for reducing our navy as a proof of our good faith, and then sending Germany an ultimatum telling her to do the same, or we would knock her into a cocked hat. And by holly, that hat would be so cocked that they'd be knocked right asunder. He said that, but for the Tories, Germany and Britain would be fellow workers in peace and reform. I thought of the little black book in my pocket, a giddy lot Scudder's friends cared for peace and reform. So, uh, so my, it's not all about the Tory, they. In a queer way, I like the speech. You can see the niceness of the chap shining out behind the muck with which he had been spoon-fed. Ah, so he's a chump. I mean, he was raised by his political, uh, uncle. I mightn't be much of an orator, but I was a thousand percent better than Sir Harry. I simply told him all I could remember about Australia. All about its Labour Party and immigration and universal service. Praying there should be no Australian there. To fact check me. I doubt if I remembered to mention free trade, but I said there were no Tories in Australia, only Labour and Liberals. And I started in telling them the kind of glorious business I thought could be made out of the Empire if we really put our backs into it. Why well, we could have the coal business! Altogether, I fancy I was rather a success. They applauded. The minister didn't like me, though. He even gave me a certificate and everything, and he still didn't like me. That weasel. To propose a vote of thanks to Sir Harry for his statesman-like speech, and to Mr. Twiston, whose words had the eloquence of an emigration agent. 
Wow, that sounds like a real put down on both accounts, huh? A lipping speech, Twister. Now, you're coming home with me. I'm all alone, and if you'll stop a day or two, I'll show you some very decent fishing. Let's go fishing, Twisden! I insist! Alright. I hope you don't get stabbed in the morning. Back at Sir Harry's, we had a hot supper and then drank grog. The time had come for me to put my cards on the table. I saw by this man's eye that he was the kind you can trust. Is there anybody he doesn't trust, like at the drop of a hat? I can trust him. I can trust him. Listen. I can trust him. I have something pretty important to say to you. Sorry. Where on earth did you get that poisonous rubbish you talked tonight? Oh, was it as bad as that? It did sound rather thin. I got most of it out of the Progressive magazine and pamphlets that agent chap of mine keeps sending me. Curse Too my sure Progressive agent. Would ever go to war with us. Do I need to censor what I said the there? In six weeks, and it won't need an answer. <sighs> Probably. If you'll give me your attention for half an hour, I'm going to tell you a story. I mean, it's just wordplay on what they said, but I know YouTube is really sensitive, so... I'll probably bleep out a statement I made, you won't know what I'm talking about, and I'm okay with that. I blinked no detail. Hey, after all, cover-ups are fitting in this game. So you see... You've got here in your house, here in your house is one man that is wanted for the Portland Place murder. What's with the echo? Your duty is to send your car for the police and give me up. I don't think I'll get very far. There'll be an accident, and I'll have a knife in my ribs an hour or so after arrest. Nevertheless, it's your duty as a law-abiding citizen. Perhaps in a month's time you'll be sorry, but you have no cause to think of that. He was looking at me with bright, steady eyes. Was it this game or the other one? Nope, I'm thinking of another game. I was going to say, another game somebody commented about, like, oh, the dead stuffed animal head on the wall creeped me out. What was your job in Rhodesia, Mr. Hanney? Mining. Mining engineer. I've made my pile cleanly, <laughs> and I've had a good time in the making of it. Not a profession that weakens the nerves, is it? <laughs> As to that... My nerves are good enough. Come on, game, really? I know it makes me feel super juvenile, but come on. I took the honey knife and did the old Mashana trick of tossing it in there and cashing it into my lips. Sounds like a moronic trick to me. I don't want proof. I may be an ass on the platform, but I can size up a man. You're no murderer, and you're no fool. I believe you're speaking the truth. I'm going to back you up. Now, what can I do? First, I want you to write a letter to your uncle. To your uncle? I want to get in touch with the government people sometime before the 15th of June. Mm. He pulled his mustache. It was a fake all the time. This is foreign office business, and my uncle would have nothing to do with it. Besides, you'd never convince him. No. I'll go one better. I'll write to the permanent secretary of the foreign office. He's my godfather and one of the best going. Now, what do you want? He's the best godfather I have. He sat down at a table and wrote to my dictation. Don't believe anything they say. Uh, please save the king or queen or whoever. Dear Walter, I hope this letter. F <laughs> What's with all these random crossovers? The stuffed head on the wall, and now Walter. Uh, I hope this letter finds you well, and I must apologize for not being in touch for such a long while. I'm finding all my time taken up with this political business. Even to, the, yeah, even to the detriment of my fishing! Anyway, on to more important matters. My fishing! Without, sending over, without sounding overly enigmatic, 
I'm writing to say that if a man called Twizen happens to make your acquaintance before the 15th of June this year, it'd be to your benefit to treat him kindly, despite what he may look like. He'll be an ugly man. This Twizen chap will prove his bona fides by passing the words Blackstone and whistling Annie Laurie. Listen carefully to him, dear uncle. Dear uncle? Wait, I thought he was writing to the his godfather. He has something to say that might just wake you up. Cheerio and happy hunting. Harry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought he was writing to the other person. Good. That's the proper style. Oh, by the way, you'll find my godfather, his name's Sir Walter Bullard, down at his country cottage for Whitsuntide. It's close to Artenswell on the Kennet. And that's done. Now, what's the next? I guess they just call him uncle. You're about my height. Lend mm. me the oldest tweed suit you've got. Anything will do, so long as the color is the opposite of the clothes I destroyed this afternoon. Then, show me a map of the neighborhood and explain to me the lie of the land. Lastly, if the police come seeking me, just show them the car in the glen. If the other lot turn up, tell them I caught the South Express after your meeting. Diversion, lying, misdirection. He did, or promised to do, all these things. I shaved off the remnants of my moustache and got inside an ancient suit of what I believe is called heather mixture. I'm very concerned about my, the material of my suits. That man gave me some notion of my whereabouts and told me the two things I wanted to know. Where the main railway to the south could be joined and what were the wildest districts near hand. Yes, I need to get wild. <laughs> He wakened me from my slumbers in the smoking room armchair and led me blinking into the dark, starry night. Into the tool shed with you. An old bicycle was found in the tool shed and handed over to me. Alright, I got a. Turn to the right, up on the long fur road. By daybreak, you'll be well into the hills. Then I should pitch the machine into a bog and take to the moors on foot. You can put in a week among the shepherds and be as safe as if you were in New Guinea. Thank you. Think nothing of it. You got me out of a tight spot last night. Now, you better get cracking. Good luck. I mean, you're gonna need it. To the hills! I pedaled diligently up steep roads of hill gravel... Uh, up steep roads of hill gravel till the skies grew pale with morning. No, I'm not really running to the hills, I'm biking. And I guess with that note, that'll be the end of that chapter. And uh, the end of that episode. So I'll see you later, folks. And as always, Fruit and Doggy.